Heavy rain moving across Southern California, but how long will it stick around? Sticker shock at the grocery store. When you hear how much the average family spends at the supermarket, it may make you say, wow. You're watching The Rundown. Hello, everyone. I'm Robin Winston. Rain has been coming down across Southern California. Topanga Canyon and Agua Dulce are now part of an evacuation warning due to burn scars there. People who live near Santa Maria Canyon Road north of Topanga Canyon Boulevard should be ready to go at any moment. The aftermath of the Owen fire, which burned last July, is really causing concerns for mudslides. During landslides, you want to look for warning signs, uh, sign like cracks around your or bumps on the hillsides or the slopes of your home, uh, the ground or your driveway. Another good reminder to have an emergency plan in place and those important items like medications and paperwork ready to go. We're checking in with meteorologist Belinda De Leon. She's here to let us know how long the wet weather will stick around. After three consecutive days of rain in our forecast, finally we're seeing rain, rain go away. We have a drying trend from Tuesday through the rest of the week. Now have those jackets handy because through Thursday, those temperatures are expected to stay cool in the 60s. Then a warming trend is expected as we head into the weekend. The numbers are going to feel like spring. So here's what's happening. We're saying goodbye to the rain, but we're going to continue to be under this northwesterly flow. There is going to be a wick system up to our north on Wednesday that could bring some rain to our northern slopes and more clouds here with continued cool temperatures. Now from Friday into the weekend, we will have a ridge develop over the west coast that will cause our weather to stay dry and temperatures to warm as rain stays to our north. Here's what the temperatures will look like. We'll be in the 50s for the start of the week, 60s expected through Friday, then 70s over the weekend. While inflation may be down, grocery store prices are still high. The Census Bureau finds the average American household is spending more than $1,000 per month on groceries. Families with kids spend an average of 41% more than families without. California tops the list for most expensive places to buy groceries with the average household spending nearly $300 per week. The agency says the top three most expensive cities to buy food in the state are L.A., Riverside, and San Francisco. Nevada falls closely behind on the list with Mississippi, Washington, and Florida making the top five. The Census Bureau reports that Midwest states spend lower than the average. Good news for travelers, airfares are expected to fall after years of post-pandemic highs. Kayak estimates domestic airfare will be 16% cheaper than last year. The reason? Airlines are increasing capacity, jet fuel prices are lower, and there's increased competition among the different airlines. Airfare's been on this downward trend 13 out of the last 19 months. You know, outside of the pandemic, when airfare was rock bottom, we haven't really seen these prices or the average price of airfare being this low since about 2009. And when you adjust for inflation, it's about 40% cheaper than it was a decade ago. Travel app Hopper says it expects airfare to rise in the late spring as spring break and summer travel gets going. So now's the time to start booking for your spring break flights, my friends. You can use apps like Hopper, Skyscanner, and Google Flights to get price alerts and keep them on even after you book. So if the price drops more, you can actually rebook and get travel credits for the difference. I like that idea. Alec Baldwin is once again facing charges in connection with the deadly shooting on the Rust film set. A grand jury indicted him on manslaughter charges in the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Hutchins was killed in 2021 after Baldwin's prop gun fired a live round of ammunition during rehearsals. The initial case against Baldwin was dismissed in April, but a new prosecution team presented the case to a grand jury. If convicted, Baldwin could face up to 18 months in prison. Police are looking for this group of burglars who targeted a shoe store in Bellflower. Check this out. Surveillance video shows them ramming a suspected stolen government car through a wall to get inside Hype Kingdom early Sunday morning. At least 15 people rushed in and stole more than 500 items. The owner says he's taken a lot of security measures, including multiple locks on the door, but it didn't stop the burglars. I put blood, like sweat, tears in this. A lot of hard work, long nights, um, just for them to kind of like sabotage and damage my business is, uh, it's lame. The owner tells us he started selling shoes when he was just 13 years old and opened his first store three years ago. 
A big change to the Republican field of candidates before Tuesday's New Hampshire primary. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis dropped out of the race, and he's endorsing former President Donald Trump. Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. Now the race comes down to Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. The latest New Hampshire poll shows Trump with 50% of the vote, Haley with 39%, DeSantis with 6%. We'll see who those DeSantis voters will support. Nearly 30,000 faculty members across all Cal State campuses are taking part in a five-day strike lasting through Friday. The California Faculty Association called for the statewide teacher strike after seven months of unsuccessful contract talks. That includes campuses here in Southern California like Northridge and Long Beach. Cal State Long Beach says classes school-wide were not officially canceled this week, but advised that individual classes would likely be impacted. We've advised faculty to publish their learning management system and to publish an announcement informing students what will happen in the first week. The CSU Chancellor's Office said the union's demand for a 12% raise was unreasonable and virtually impossible to meet. They proposed a 5% increase. The FAA is recommending visual inspections of more planes after a door plug flew off mid-flight. The agency said that operators of 737-900ER planes should visually inspect their door plugs to make sure they're secured. This is a different model than the one that experienced the mid-air emergency on its way to Ontario Airport. The 737-900ER is not part of the newer MAX fleet, but has the same door plug design. Both United and Alaska say they had already begun in inspections on the 900 ER United expects they'll be finished in the next few days without disruptions to customers. Boeing responded in a statement saying we fully support the FAA and our customers in this action. Prospective first-time homebuyers have another chance to get some financial help from the state. California's Dreams for All program has reopened again, but this time around there are some changes. So the program will be limited to first-generation homebuyers. That means you are disqualified if your parents are homeowners or if you have owned a home before. Recipients will also be chosen lottery style. It gives you a loan of up to 20% of the purchase price to buy the home. In exchange, when you sell the home, you pay back to the state of California about 20% of the amount that the home has appreciated or gone up in price. And those who are picked will receive a loan worth up to $150,000. The application is open until April and winners will be announced in May. Black Restaurant Week is back in Long Beach. The event is organized to spotlight the many Black-owned eateries, restaurants, food trucks, caterers, and pop-ups. One of the many restaurants participating is Shirley's Temple in Signal Hill. We are a sober restaurant and bar, so we make non-alcoholic cocktails and all kinds of beverages for the sober community. We also serve food as well. We have flatbread, sandwiches, wraps, a really good Philly cheesesteak. So come by and check us out during Black Restaurant Week. Sounds delicious. Black Restaurant Week runs through next Sunday. The godfather of funk got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The one and only George Clinton is a creative genius behind the Parliament Funkadelic Music Collection. NBC4's Jonathan Gonzalez was there for the ceremony on Friday. You can call him Dr. Funkenstein or the Prime Minister of Funk, but his brand new star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame will always read George Clinton. To look, to see these names on the streets, see these stars, I've often looked at him and was dreaming that one day I might be, you know, down here myself. And at the age of 82, Clinton's dream has come true. The Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, who championed the crossover of funk, soul, and hip-hop, was immortalized right along Hollywood Boulevard. In perspective, one thing I realized is that there is not a single name on this street that did it by themselves. Clinton is one of the pioneers of funk, exploding onto the scene in the 1970s with Parliament Funkadelic. His songs are among the most sampled in history, so even if you're not familiar with George Clinton's music, you've likely heard it through other artists. We need music that brings us all together. And nobody music brings us all together quite like this brother, bringing us together, one nation under a group. 
And the record company came to us and they said, uh, boys, if you could have anyone on earth produce your next record, who would that be? And Flea and I looked at each other and we said, George Clinton. Yeah. You know, which is, you know, good luck, right? Two months later, we moved into his house. Surrounded by stars in the crowd and on the ground, George made sure to let everyone know his star is not his alone. The foundation of this career, the fuel for this journey, while my name is the one you read, it is all of your energies that helped us get through this effort. Yeah, make my funk the peep funk. I won't smoke it at home. Yeah. Little spiritual hymn. Good night, y'all. Ah, uh, congratulations. And I love that hat, by the way. The technology that keeps your pizza warm while it's being delivered could soon be coming to clothing. This puffy red and blue suit might look like something from NASA. Right now, Domino says it's in the early stages of a trial phase. When asked if it's all part of a PR stunt, the company says if all goes well with the testing, anything could happen. That includes a collaboration with a fashion retailer. And just in case you're curious, yes, the suit's hands and feet are removable. Domino says it'll help you maintain your core body temperature, losing just four degrees over a two hour period, even in frigid outdoor conditions. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a genius idea. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app at our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune into Today in LA on NBC4, weekdays 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be helping you get around with traffic reports throughout your morning commute. I'll see you next time on The Rundown.